Okay, so I will start. Huh? So today's uh, lecture is twenty sixth. I was discussing a solution technique because I had I had transformed the two dimensional problem to one dimensional. I had got the equation in this form. This is the form of the dy by dx. Y is a vector. Huh? Please, please say yes or no. Y dy by dx equal to b y plus some q. This is the form of the equation that we had derived. I had derived one for uh, plane stress problem completely. If you see, and then we had put the boundary condition at x equal to zero, x equal to l, and then the problem reduced to one dimension only in z direction, only in the thickness direction and this is the form is like this. Okay. But I am, I am writing in general form, you know this is there all the quantities are changing with respect to z in the beam because it was x and z beam dimension was x is the longitudinal direction thickness was z. So, x and z, so x we reduced it by using a solution in x direction which satisfied the equilibrium equations and uh, we satisfied the boundary conditions completely in x direction x equal to 0 x equal to l you know we had assumed sin cosine function and then then i said then let us then i have given you some assignments one is the method of uh, pagano second one is the method of srinivas how to solve a after reducing the problem to one dimension, how to solve the problem? Okay. How to solve the ordinary differential equation? So, different people have different approaches. So, I have told you that please read and assimilate and then submit those two. And then I am telling you the third method how to solve, and I have given you all the logic behind it that how to choose the dependent variables at z equal to constant what quantities appear naturally that means u and w displacement and corresponding to u the shear stress corresponding to w the sigma z sigma z so these are our y so y we have taken y see in our case we have taken y y is a vector of quantities which are dependent variables. So, you have taken u w tau z and sigma z, but now we are I am trying to give you the method in a general sense. If you have a ordinary set of ordinary differential equation y is a vector then the form of the equation is like this and then boundary conditions are specified at n you know at x1 and x2 this, this is the this is you are going from this point to this point these are the two boundaries and this is the domain this is the length of the beam and half the boundary conditions are specified here half the other half is specified here half means not all the four quantities only two are specified here in, in our case, what are the quantities which are specified? At the bottom of the beam, there is no shear stress, there is no normal stress. On the top, there is no shear stress, there is only one normal stress, because loading is given. Huh? So, loading. Okay, the basic thing is, so how to integrate this equation? And I had told you I had already started the solution procedure, but again I will just for the sake of completeness I will tell you numerical integration of O D is is inherently an initial value problem. I told you numerical integration of ordinary differential equation is an O D uh, is an initial value problem because you should ne you need all the conditions at initial conditions. Here you don't have all the all the things at initial condition. You have only half. Not all the four quantities are available. Where all the n values should be known at x equal to x1. All the n values means all the four values. 
the initial conditions. This, this table I had made already. So, let us take n equal to 4, n is an even number and n is 4, n is always even. This also I have told you number of times in all our solid mechanics problems, n is always even, order of differential equation will always be even. So, if you take 4, then I had told you how to integrate this, how to integrate this kind of equation. So, let us call them as now general y 1, y 2, y 3, y 4, they can represent anything u w tau x, you know we have taken these four quantities, but let us do not worry, let us say y 1 to y 4, because we are developing a numerical technique, it is valid for any method. So, this is my, this table is there, this is my initial x equal to x 1, this is x equal to x 2, final edge. So, this is the initial edge, and this is the final edge, second one. So, I told you that there are four quantities, I cannot start the numerical integration unless I know all the four values. So, last time I have told you that let us say out of these four, assume that y 3 and y 4 are known, two, y 1 and y 2 are question mark not known. So, what I should do? Plus, you have got differential equation, there is also a different, every differential equation, uh, we have also some non homogeneous term. Non homogeneous means that loading term or something temperature term, something will come q. So, q that is called non homogeneous. If it is not there, then this differential equation called is called a homogeneous ordinary differential equation. If this is there, then it is a non homogeneous ordinary differential equation. So, q. So, q please retain q, include retain it q is kept and then these are known, these are not known. So, you set them equal to 0. I gave you the simile. I also gave you this is like if you know, if you have done flexibility method of structure analysis, it is like determinate structures, make all redundant 0, make the structure determinate. So, since I do not know, these are the reactions, these are the unknowns. So, I am setting that equal to 0 and I am keeping the load on it and now, now all the four quantities are known. So, I go through my integration process means I have, I have told you integration process is always step by step. This path is there, this path will be divided into number of steps this path will be divided, any numerical integration process is always a step by step procedure. So, this path will be divided into number of step size h, h will be always, h is always total length divided by number of, number of subdivisions that you would like to, I cannot give you that you divide n equal to, I mean sorry, this n and m this is the differential equation, this n capital N, let us say, number of steps. Mm -hmm. So, you divide it into number of steps and then you know all the values here, then you go and use the numerical integration algorithm, any one, there are number of them. I have told you that Euler's method is there. Runge Kutta method of second order is there, Runge Kutta method fourth order is there, Runge Kutta Gill method, there is also one Gill method, Gill, Gill did uh, improvement over fourth order, Runge Kutta Gill, G I double L, Gill method is a method which is made for computer use, fourth order has been improved. R k, R k fourth order has been improved by Gill and he made it uh, suitable for 
use with computers, digital computers. So, it is called Ramke Kuta Gill method. So, these methods can be used to take the solution from here to here. If you know the solution here, you can get the solution here in one step. Of course, it is approximate. Knowing the solution here again, you can repeat the same thing, you can come here. Like this, you please come to the final edge here, step by step. So, you will reach, if you know all these four values, so you will reach here and let us say the four values are these four. I have given y 1 to y 4, I am giving second subscript as 0 0 0, because this I am calling it 0, 0 solution a 0 integration, not 0 solution, 0 integration, it is the determinate. Then next one, so I have got this, so this is some fictitious value I have got, because I do not know this, this I have put arbitrarily equal to 0, actually it could be x 1 and x 2, this could be x 1 and x 2. So, next solution I will do, just like in flexibility method, we apply a unit load. Assume the next redundant to be equal to unity, since you do not know the value. So, we apply a unit force and then with that unit force, we try to find out the deflections in the structure, that structure that you have got, determinate structure. And then, so here again you apply the unit here and set the other other one, other redundant equal to 0. This is not known, so please put it equal to 0. The other two which we knew, which are known, those have to be anyway set equal to 0. You cannot take, because otherwise you are taking superposition. Na? If you take that also every time, so it will be summation. This again will come here, so it will be double. We do not want. So, this has to be set equal to 0. Only one you give unity with these four values, please find out the next set of result over here at the end. This is x 1 and this is x 2. Numerical integration is performed and then similarly, next time you please set this equal to whatever you had taken equal to unity, set that equal to 0. The other one you please give value unity. Again, this one whatever was known you please set equal to 0. So, only, so let us say this value was x 2, I cannot give x 2, I have to give a numerical value. So, I am giving unity and then I am getting these values 4. So, I have got 3 sets of values at the final edge, none of these are the correct values, because the initial conditions that I have used in every, so here uh, here I have included my non-homogeneous term, in the next one you have to make it equal to 0, you have to solve only a homogeneous differential equation. In the next one also you have to make it 0, solve only, so that when I take all this together, combine this, I get my total differential equation. Otherwise, I do not want two times this. So, now, now we can set up the equation to satisfy the boundary conditions at x equal to x 2. See, boundary conditions at x equal to x 1, this one was known. So, I am taken it. I do not have now, I have not been to satisfy my boundary conditions at x equal to x 2. So, what I do now? I will set up my equation. So, this is what I have set up. So, I have taken from here this one. Let us say that out of these four quantities, you know at the final age only two and again you know only let us say y 3, y 4. Since it was stress, na, you know stress was known in our, in our problem. So, I am taking y 3, y 4 anything is possible, any 2 is ok. So, let us say y 3, y 3, y 4 are known and their value is y 3 bar and y p and y 4 bar. 
So, these are the known boundary conditions. Now, on the left hand side you just see what I have done. What I have done is I have taken this y 3. So, I have taken this solution y 3 0 y 3 0 see listen y 3 0 y 3 0 plus y 3 1 into x 1. If this was x 1 what this would have been because only 1 is here see there is nothing it is a linear problem. So, x 1 multiplied by that will be x 1 times this. So, x 1 times y 3 1 plus next one here it is x 2 x 2 times y 3 2 y 3 2 multiplied by x 2 that must be equal to y 3 bar y 3 bar is the known boundary condition at x equal to x 2 this boundary condition I had not set up last time I think up to here I was there. So, this is now I have set up this similarly from these three sets of result y 4 bar is known known means yes it is given boundary condition is given it is known quantity. So, that one will be y 4 0 the first solution 0 solution plus y 4 1 multiplied by x 1 plus y 4 2 multiplied by x 2 equal to y 4. So, I have got two equations this linear equation I will have to set up. What is unknown in this equation only x 1 and x 2 it is a linear system of algebraic equation only x 1 and x 2 are unknowns. If you have any doubt anybody you ask me hmm? because this is crucial this is called now of course then then you simply of course this is known y 3 bar y 4 bar this these two terms can be taken on the right hand side y 3 0 and y 4 0. So, I am left with this this can be written in matrix form two equations in two unknowns hmm? yes or no and all these coefficients are known this 2 by 2 matrix is known all these coefficients you have got through integration these are numerical values x 1 x 2 are unknown right hand side again this is given to you but this is the boundary can bar quantities are boundary conditions and y 3 0 y 4 0 also are known. So, can you not solve this equation 2 by 2 and get x 1 x 2 of course, you will have to find out inverse or you do it by gas elimination or by elimination any method. So, I have just written here please find out x 1 and x 2 compute x 1 and x 2 if the number of unknowns will be more you repeat this for n by 2 times. So, how many integrations we have carried out? Hmm? How many integrations actually from x 1 to x 2 we carried out here? This table how many 0 1 and 2 3 integration. So, number of integrations required to set up the equation and find out unknown x i s will always be n by 2 plus 1 it will always be n by 2 plus 1 plus 1 is non homogeneous integration this is called also non homo equation this is the first one non homogeneous non homogeneous means take the loading term in the differential equation and rest are all homogeneous solution. So, try to understand this the concept is very simple only thing is. So, you can compute this then mm, thus at x equal to x 1 n by 2 values that is y 3 and y 4 were already known. 
yes at x equal to x 1, this is ok. Huh? So, what I am I do not know what I want to infer, but I have written this huh? at x equal to n by 2 were already known. The other n by 2 values y 1 and y 2 were not known at x equal to x 1. If they were known, then it was initial value problem and we could have integrated, because it is a boundary value problem only half the values were known. So, this is not known. So, the other n by 2 values were not known, that is because it is a boundary value problem. We assumed that you assumed, we assumed them to be x 1 and x 2 is it ok? They were not known. So, we assumed them to be x 1 and x 2 and now we have computed x 1 and x 2 at the start of the edge. That means, at the start thus all the four values of y at x equal to x 1 are now known. Hmm? Is it clear? Is there any mistake? I have not seen any book or anything, I have just written my understanding. Thus, all the four values of y at x equal to now known and we can treat this as an I V P. Since, all the were known, so now what is the problem? I can integrate, we start that all the four values are known. So, I can if you want to if you want to get any value at any point of x, now you can do a integration. Hmm? Since they are all known at the initial value now, so we can carry out that is what I am saying. Now, now we can carry out a final numerical integration with all the initial conditions known to yield y at any point along the path x x 2 x 1. Hmm? Is it ok? Is it clear? So, now with these four values known at the start of the solution. So, we can do this. So, this process this preceding of procedure, the preceding procedure of solving a boundary value problem procedure solving a boundary value problem through a set of initial value problems. See one boundary value problem, but then there are number of initial value problems n by 2 plus 1. The preceding procedure of solving a boundary by through a set of initial value problem is called is called conversion of a BBP into a set of set into a set of initial value problems. We have converted, we have our approach has been 
to convert a boundary value problem into a set of initial value problem in order to solve the original boundary value problem. And uh, this approach for solid mechanics, this approach I do not know about other areas for solid mechanics. problems, this approach for solid mechanics problem was, was started or begun started by John Goldberg. It is a general method. So, this was started by him and slowly and slowly, but not uh, it has not become very popular the method I personally feel that this method deserves more popularity than what it has uh, got so far, because this is a very good method for solution very straightforward, very simple and uh, so, this is uh, he started and then he started using, but then uh, for this problem uh, the problem of beam that we are solving through thickness, we are solving this now through thickness. This is uh, none of the quantities vary exponentially u w that means your u displacement w displacement then shear stress and the normal stress none of these quantities variation of none of these quantity is very steep from bottom to top they vary normally they vary through a normal curve you know not exponential but if there are problems with solid mechanics where the nature of differential equation is such that these quantities will vary exponentially. One part will go exponentially high, other part will come exponentially decaying. It will be something value at the right at the start and then it will decay, other part will have something uh, at the beginning and then it will exponentially rise, two parts. Now, there is nothing in this world that when you apply a force or you apply a disturbance at any point, as you go along the path disturbance will become more, it has to reduce only. As you go along the path, even vibration, even any wave, as it travels, it has to reduce, its amplitude has to reduce. So, similarly, if there is a displacement here this much, which you have given, if you are giving a displacement at the bottom this much, uh, as you go through the thickness it must reduce. If you have applied a shear stress here this much, as you go over here it will it must reduce. Similarly, any quantity must reduce only and unfortunately it is not varying exponentially, but in the case of shells, theory of shells, the shell equations are such that these quantities vary exponentially and this, this approach you have to modify this approach slightly. Process remains the same integration process, but within each integration which you are doing, we cannot do from bottom to top in one go. We have to subdivide this just like finite elements you have to 
do the integration over a shorter distance so that so that the exponentially increasing quantity or the solution the solution has got two parts one which goes it it uh, what is called i mean what is the word something huh? no not diverse I mean something which blows. One is blowing part which goes along the path it blows the solution, other one is decaying part. Now, decaying is a physical quantity, it is admissible. The blowing part is inadmissible, not admissible. So, in actually differential equation when you do analytically, we have that part e to the power of minus x multiplied by a sin cosine plus b cosine plus e to the power of plus plus uh, e x multiplied by c c sine plus d cosine something we do and then we say the second part is not admissible only the first part will give you the solution so we suppress that right in the beginning in analytical but since it is a, it is the behavior of the equation and you are solving the total equation through numerical process. There is no way to do that suppression. Both the parts are there in the differential equation. So, what is the approach? Do not integrate over a longer distance, so that it should not blow, it should not increase too much. This will go, this will reduce from here to here and the other part will slightly you keep it in such a manner that it does not disturb this solution which is decaying part. Decaying part should not be affected by the increase of the other solution. So, we call that we integrate this total length over smaller segments and then we develop what is called segmentation method. So, that is what that paper which I have given you it gives you segmentation method and complete routine also is given there. Uh, so, it will solve any problem of shells also. Okay. In the case of plate and beam, you can take only one, only one directly you can integrate, but while doing for shells, you have to integrate over smaller, smaller parts and it can be done. So, anyway, so, that is segmentation, but the process is this. So, now I want you to solve that problem which I have given you. I have, I have derived the complete equation, solution of that problem using this hmm, by conversion of boundary value problem into initial value problem. Now, until see before MATLAB came, MATLAB, what is a MATLAB? MATLAB is a all these numerical routine, I mean numerical algorithms have been programmed already. All these algorithms, numer Runge Kutta fourth order, Runge Kutta Gill method, everything is already programmed there and some subroutine is made in MATLAB. So, you have to give only the initial condition and the differential equation and then it will integrate. So, I mean till I was a student, we could integrate directly only an initial value problem, but now in the new MATLAB, they are integrating directly a boundary value problem. Now, that means, they must have included this whole process of conversion inside. Inside the routine, they have already converted, you know they have doing, they are doing this. So, you will give the boundary condition here and here at the two points, give your differential equation and the two ends and half boundary condition here, half boundary condition here, it will give you solution it will say divide into 10 parts and then it will give you solution at each and every point. Now, how it gives? So, do not think that it, it, uh, it is doing boundary value problem directly. 
inside the routine, it has already this entire procedure is there, conversion of BVP into number of initial value problem. That means, this has been included inside the MATLAB. So, this is a new, uh, it was not there in the olden days, when we were using uh, mainframe computers, because mainframe computers also had some built in routines. So, we used to use, uh, but there this was not there. Okay. So, I would request you, last year some of the students had done this very nicely and uh, they had solved no, uh, plate problem, not only beam problem, but plate and uh, through this method conversion through MATLAB method directly compared the results, compared with the exact solution, how the solutions are coming effect of number of steps into the total thickness. <coughs> if you take 10 steps, 20 steps, 30 steps, how do you know how many steps should you take? Huh? Huh? Convergence means what? Close to what? You mean to so actual, in real life you will know actual solution? Huh? Uh, what are you saying? Uh, if you use 10, 10 steps, next time use 20 steps and if you see that at all the common points, because 10 will have, 20 will have more points. Na? So, at the all the common points, if you see all the values are same, so you can say that 10 step was good enough. Then you can also try 5 and see whether honestly you are using 10, maybe only 5 was, 5 steps were enough. So, we should that is called numerical convergence. Okay. So, you should always get converged solution, not any solution. The trouble with most of the students or most of the people who do not know numerical analysis, they get any solution. Hmm? So, any solution is garbage, solution, solution can be 50 percent, 100 percent off, it will be number, some number, but that may not be the true solution. So, you should try to get a close to the true solution, of course, true solution you can never get, it is all numerical, but close to the numerical based upon convergence criteria. So, put convergence criteria that difference between the two values between the previous and this should not be more than 10 to power of let us say minus 4, one, 1 into 10 to power of minus 4. That means, it will check the difference between two values and then it will stop. So, all these things are there in your MATLAB program also. Now, these are unfortunately built in already. The students do not learn the method and they will just use MATLAB. And then when we will ask, yes, what is the meaning of this tolerance, because MATLAB has given a tolerance of you provide what is, uh, what is the er error that you provide 0 0.003, 0 0.005, 0 0.001 something they will say, you provide a tolerance. Tolerance means difference between two solutions. Why it is given? It is given to check the convergence. So, please solve that problem and see for yourself how good, how bad it is compared to Pagano method and, and uh, Srinivas method. And fourth method is also there, there is something called, what is the method? Uh, yes, state space approach, state of state, state space, you know it is again a combination of all these four variables. These are my state, state quantity, state variables, state at any instant, at any, at any z constant, these are my state four. So, it is called state space, state space approach. 
it is similar to this approach only formulation is similar to this, but then it is solution is obtained analytically. Solution is not directly uh, obtained numerically as I have told you, solution is obtained analytically. So, many people solve also they convert the problem any complex problem into one dimensional problem and then they use a state a space approach, a state a space approach. You, you type a state a space approach and number of references will come in Google. So, okay. so this gets over now, I will not take anything, the same thing can be repeated for plate problem. I have done it only for beam. Uh, but this is exact beam, not not and not not thin beam. Okay, exact beam. All right. So then next is there are two things that I would like to cover. Uh, one is see the standard thing that is given in most of the elasticity book. The method is called inverse problem or inverse approach. And it is a stress based approach. What is the meaning of stress based? Means we write down our governing equation in terms of stresses. So, I will just give you a hint how it is written in that way. And then we try to obtain a function which satisfies the equilibrium equation. See, we have got how many equations in elasticity, equilibrium, then compatibility if you do not want, if you are if you are not starting from basic displacement, if your approach is not displacement based, then if it is displacement based, then from displacement you directly go to strain displacement and then to equilibrium and this will also utilize your constitutive relation. But basic equations are only strain displacements and equilibrium. If it is a stress based, then it is equilibrium equation which is in terms of stresses and second one is compatibility equation, strain compatibility equation. Of course, it will make use of your constitutive relation also, but basic equations are the two. So, stress based approach, uh, 2D problem, uh, 2D problem continued, 2D, 2D, two dimensional, and same thing is also extended to 3D. you have got two equations, equilibrium, del sigma x plus del, let us for simplicity, simplicity take the body forces to be 0. It can be included, body force slightly it makes the formulation little complicated. So, let us uh, take the body force 0, huh? no body force. See, normally we assume now whenever we solve any design problem, do we take 
uh, no, no, we, we do take some time self weight of the beam, but if the load is too high, then we neglect the self weight. If the imposed load itself is too high, then self weight is a small fraction, so we neglect. So, that is called body force. So, so this is with no body force. So, choose a function, choose a function of course, of two dimension. It has to be of two dimension, a two dimensional function. Choose a two dimensional function, say phi x y, some function phi x y, which satisfies which identically. satisfies the equilibrium equations. That means, my function is such just like see when we solve the problem, we chose a function in x direction such that it satisfied the boundary condition at x equal to 0 and x equal to l. So, that we do not have to worry about now that dimension boundary condition is satisfied. You should always remember that any differential equation solution of a mathematical problem defined by a differential equation should be such that it satisfies the boundary conditions and the governing differential equation differential equation let us say y is the variable, y is the dependent. So, y should be such that when you substitute that y into differential equation left hand side equal to right hand side 0 equal to 0 and boundary condition also is satisfied everywhere I mean on in both the sides of, or in all the three sides if it is a three dimensional problem. So, there also we are assuming a function which satisfies the boundary condition then we substitute that into the governing equation and then we are solving that governing equation which becomes one dimensional and then we are really integrating in that direction satisfying the boundary condition in that direction is it okay so we are solving the problem totally we are not it is a rigorous method of solution rigor there is no approximation approximation is only in if you are using a let us say numerical numerical method. So, there is some approximation otherwise there is no conceptually there is no approximation. So, here which satisfies the equilibrium. So, if I say of course, this is a standard somebody somebody must have chosen if sigma x I take it like this del is square phi del phi del square or del phi del square phi now del square phi by del y square sigma y equal to del square phi by del x square and tau x y if it is such minus del square phi by del x. Supposing this is there, my phi function is such that I get sigma x by this, this derivative, sigma y by this derivative and then you please substitute now this in this 
and see what you get phi. So, phi is such that phi is phi is this my phi function is such which I have chosen. Then you please substitute this into the first equation. So, what you get del upon del x sigma x sigma x is plus something will come minus, but then del upon del y tau x y uh, y hai na? yes tau x y is minus Now, you please see whether it satisfies. So, this is del third derivative by del x. I am just substituting in the if you have chosen if you have chosen your phi function in this way and now you substitute in the equation check. So, what you get here? So, left hand side is so 0 equal to 0 identically satisfied. Hmm. Similarly, second one, second one also will become same thing, second one is del tau minus plus del upon del y sigma y sigma y is del square phi you can see both again this is therefore equilibrium equation equation is identically satisfied. So, my this function satisfies my equilibrium equation. Incidentally, this phi this this function was chosen by a person called Airy A I R Y. name. So, it is called airy stress function, stress function derivative of this function directly gives you stresses. So, it is called airy stress So, next is what? this function if it is so then it it must now i must substitute this function into my now what is the we have done we have done two dimensional problem completely what is the uh, compatibility equation in two dimension What is the compatibility equation? Strain, ah, uh, strain compatibility. Del square epsilon x del y square plus del square epsilon. There is only one compatibility. For two dimensions, there is only one, not six. Equal to. gamma x y del x del y no sign no sign is ok. So, this is my compatibility equation.
So, write compatibility equation in terms of stresses. So, you get here del square by del epsilon x is equal to E by let us say for isotropic. See, this has to be done for every material. So, this is equal to epsilon s is simple sigma x by E minus nu sigma y by e. Huh? this is ok. This. in terms of what is this tau x y by g and tau x y into g then this one will be in terms of by g and by g will be equal to 2 1 plus nu by e. Hmm, this is ok now multiplied by tau x y. Hmm, this gives us what if if elastic constants are constant if if uh, if constant if e nu then we can take E common that is ok and then uh, this will become del square sigma x by del y square minus nu Am I making a mistake? This is okay. E can take common throughout. Then
some del square we should get. Uh, tau x y in terms of uh, you add the two equations, add the two equations and eliminate uh, uh -huh. then we will get because ultimately we should get del square. Uh, sigma x plus sigma y equal to 0, that is what is you get. See, so some I mean it is <laughs> it is all mathematical, you know. So, Airy did all this, uh, so so far there is no mistake, na? this is okay. So, only thing is that what will be this from equilibrium equation from equilibrium equation huh? y 2 will not be there acha we will add twice so okay okay and one we are one we are taking derivative with respect to uh, this one x so it will become del square so shall we write here uh, minus del square sigma x by uh, uh, del square this and then here we will do x and then here we will do y. So, minus minus again del square sigma y uh, del y square. Is this okay? Hmm? So, this is okay, this is through equilibrium equation elimination. So, then we get here, yes, so minus comes, so it is 1 minus Uh, yes, sir. So, you now you see del square. Huh? So, this left hand side, this is also there, same thing now, del square and del x x square. So, this, this term and this term, left hand side, right hand side, this is, we are, we are writing this is the right hand side. So, this is ok, and now we are left with this. So, so it goes on the left hand side. Mm -hmm. This one is derivative is ok. Huh? Achha, ha, ha. Ok, sigma del is 5. So, what, what do you get here? We write plus this will become plus here. So, del is square, del x is square, and then del is square del y square sigma x this and this again plus del square plus del square del y square And therefore, mm. 
and this is your del square. So, we get one, huh? so okay. So, anyway, finally we got the right equation. Huh? So, this is this is one one. So, all this was derived by Airy and and finally, if you substitute the value of sigma x and sigma y in terms of phi, so then you get. So, this is what? What is this equation by the way? No, no, this is okay, Laplace equation. This is Laplace equation, but actual equation it is a compatibility equation. It is the strain compatibility equation written in terms of stresses. This is a strain, this is Laplace equation, Laplacian but then sigma x plus sigma y and sigma x plus sigma you know it is invariant in uh, first invariant. So, under various uh, transformation any any at any point in any orientation this this will always be constant. So, okay. so then then you substitute this final final I think we will finish this quickly. So, that final equation become so, I do not want to leave anything for you to derive 10. Okay, so, and sigma x, so del square, sigma x is del square phi del y square plus del square phi. this r this is del square r del square del square phi r by harmonic del fourth phi equal to 0. So, if you can solve by harmonic you see mathematicians know how to solve all these equations you know they are used to solving harmonic equation by harmonic equation. So, in a domain so you can get the stress. So, this is by harmonic equation in stress function. So, this is a by harmonic by harmonic equation in airy stress function phi. So, if you can solve this choose a phi in such a way that it satisfies this hmm? Of course, how what about boundary condition? This is only the equation. This is the governing equation. See, any mathematical problem has two parts. One is governing equation. So, this is the governing equation in alternative form. So, this will be in defined in domain in x to x x equal to 0 to x equal to l z equal to minus h by 2 to plus h by 2. Let us say it is a beam problem you are solving. So, this is your domain subject to plus subject to boundary conditions on phi on phi at the 4 phi has to be given on all the 4 edges. Here here, here and since it is phi means it has to be stress only in terms of stresses. Hmm? So, no displacement boundary condition can be prescribed in this method. So, that is a little problematic anyway we will see because phi, phi has to be given on all the four edges. 
uh, in the domain. What we will do tomorrow morning, I will give you some sample problems based upon this, how it is called inverse, means assume a phi called inverse, means assume a phi which satisfies this and then check what does, what kind of stress distribution it gives you. You know, in beams we know how does sigma x varies, how does shear vary. So, depending upon that you can get a set of functions which will give you different kind of stress distribution. So, we will use such, such functions in different situation. If you are solving a beam problem then use choose that. So, it is a indirect method. We are not solving the differential equation rigorously. We are choosing a function which satisfies this that means and then trying to see what kind of stress distribution it gives it gives you and then you use that in different situations. So, we will give you some examples of that tomorrow. Huh? How so most of the strength of I am sorry theory of velocity books, they discuss this in great length, not actual solution which we have done. We have done the actual solution of three dimensional problem. By the way, actual solution is started, you know the first solution was only in 1969, 69, uh, 70. So, it was very late. Uh. Before that, there were no solutions. So, but now the people are getting interested to solve the problem. Uh, so, so we stop here. I think I will give you some solutions of this tomorrow, and then we'll close this. Uh, same thing can be extended to th three dimension also. You also have any stress function for three dimensional problem, little complicated, but you have function, but there is no point in following this. Nobody now follows this approach. This was there in olden days. I think this thing has become, it is only for understanding, you know. So, and then I will take up another important area uh, where theory of velocity has found application. See in strength of material you have done circular, torsion of circular shaft, circular cross section shaft. Why was circular cross section chosen? Why not rectangular cross section? Huh? Warping? Uh, warping, okay. So, I mean, but the reason is warping is okay, warping. Warping will occur, but then uh, so, we chose because there with circular we can make so many uh, physical assumptions based upon its symmetry about axis. It is based upon no warping is based upon the physical argument. No warping of circular cross section is based upon the argument. It is deductive argument if you see. But if you want to really solve a torsion problem of a non-circular cross section, then the cross section, if you apply a torque, then the cross section becomes like this. The, it does not remain plane. Here the circular cross section was remaining plane even after application of torque. It was not caving in or bulging out any cross section. But it will not happen in non circular cross section. Now, that cannot be solved by approximate method, the assumptions that we make for circular. There we could make some assumptions and get that simplified solution. But for non circular cross section, you will have to solve the elasticity approach. So, this one I will take and then let us see. So, this is because that one is remaining, and then of course, there are a number of problems not that everything is in. We have not done, uh, see everything can be done for composites. Everything can be done for 
orthotropic material. It can also be done for layered material. It can also be done for functionally graded material. There is also there is something called piezoelectric material. Means you have to, material is such it is senses. You pass a current, it will deform. It will expand. Or you change the physically you change the you know bend it. It will it will produce electricity, vice versa also. So, when you are passing a current voltage if you are giving, it is deforming and when you deform also then also, so such material called piezoelectric. So, they are used for controlling the shape, shape of a structure uh, that is in aerospace. So, that material also is there. So, there are many thermal problems, you can add thermal, any any problem here you can add temperature, bring in temperature. So, all such problems were not solved earlier till mid 1950s, 60s. They were all remaining only in the theory, only formulation, no actual solution. So, solution is started only by 1950 onwards. So, with temperature is this with that. So, anyway it is a now we have number of solutions actual solutions that can be seen. So, that is how text of text theory of velocity text also should change. It should not remain the same as what T motion co has written. Okay. So, 